Welcome to On Track Tuesday, April 11th, April 12th, 2022. Uh, sorry, I have no internet or something. I cannot get my computer to bring up StreamYards. Messing with it for the last probably, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So, can you hear me? Hey, Chris, how you doing, buddy? Can you hear me okay? It's just kind of like a last minute setup here. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I can even see comments or anything yet. So, hey Jerry, Wigwag, Pappy. Again, sorry I'm late, guys. I could not get my stream yards to come up, so I had to go live on YouTube, uh, which is fine. But bear with me while I continue to find a, I don't know, somewhere to put this camera better, maybe. Um, it's a little better view behind me, at least. Can you guys hear me okay? Hey John, hi Plains, how are you? Split Rock, Sparky, good day. Alright, so I did put out a little blurb earlier about, uh, well first of all, can you guys hear me? I need to know that because I'm not, for whatever reason, sure. Hey Burris, how are you doing? Hi everybody there. See, I don't know why I can't. Get this to come up. And the heck with it now. I mean, I'm already doing it this way, but like the internet's working. I'm saying a lot. Can you hear me? It sounds like it. I have uh, I pulled it up here on my computer. I'm going to shut it down now, but just wanted to see if um, I could hear myself. Okay, like that. I'm going to turn the volume down off on that. Alright, this might be easier for me to see some of the chat and stuff too, so I had a way of putting the phone over top of that. Alright. Anyhow. Split Rock, Sparky, all you guys. How are you guys? Uh, Dragon Lover 68. How are you? What's I missing here? Eminem Rails. Mark, how's it going? And Chesco. First week he's oh, I was smart out. Chesco says we can hear you, but worse, we can see you. <laughs> Upside down. Toy Curly, how are you? John Cleveland going back through. John Benicki. Yeah, good evening, I should say. All right, it's Chris, Tennessee River Union. Say hi to Pappy. All right. <clears throat> anyways, again, with the anyways. So, for those of you that expected to see uh, Redbird Tony, I don't know if most of you guys are, most of you guys are aware of Tony's situation. And it, with him having to do dialysis and everything now, um, he's trying to really figure things out and how he's going to make this all work. So, until that time, he's... Hopefully next month he said he'll be able to uh, get back on track with On Track Tuesday. So um, I was able to fill in tonight. I don't know how long I'll be on for. It was kind of really last minute, even though I announced it this morning. I had something to do tonight that I kind of tried to push back at least. So um, I didn't want to not do the show and I wanted to try to help Tony out. So. With that being said, here is me. You guys are uh, 
depending how you look at it, you're either lucky or you are unlucky, you'll have me twice this month. So, depends how you look at that. Um, not much has got done here. <coughs> For some reason I have a fear of starting this river. Not so much, not almost, I guess kind of a fear, but not really, I just don't feel like... Uh, um, it's going to be a lot of work, and I just haven't really had the time to put into it as of late, last week or so. And uh, I'm trying to decide on how I want to do this. Is anybody in the chat... I really wish I could bring streamers up, because I really wanted to just open it up to bring anybody in. But I don't know how I would do that now. You know. Joe Rainer, how you doing, buddy? Bernard C., how are you? Ken Amos, how are you? Anybody else I've missed, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Um, it's always nice to see all you guys. Um, so, with the backdrop, the river, the backdrop comes all the way down to the river. So, I need to protect the backdrop. I'm going to do the, the pour, I'm, uh, probably resin. I'm going to probably do that. Uh, Enviro tech or whatever it's called. Uh, but I gotta protect the backdrop or else it's gonna have wicking up the paper on the backdrop. So I thought about using kind of a piece of uh, like plastic. Like you would get, um, you know, like some of the plastic packaging stuff. Like have plastic window type material that, you know, is on the top of certain boxes and stuff. Um, so now I have a piece of plastic that I have from an old poster, framed poster, and I figured that would be fine. But if I get it too high, it will be able to, you might be able to see it. So I won't be able to cut it because I don't want to end up cutting the backdrop. So, clear cock across the back. Correct. But, either way, that's going to be a liquid against the backdrop, so I don't want any chances of ruining the backdrop. So I was thinking about putting a bead of caulk down on the flat level, the area. And does anybody use that EnviroTech, like, and use, say, Saran Wrap, like that clear wrap that you wrap food and stuff in? Hey, uh, Heath is here. That's it. It's off the rails. That's why it's off the rails. He was planning on coming in. Because my thinking is, if I could take some of that saran wrap, press it down flat into that caulk, clear caulk, and somehow against the backdrop and tack it up, or somehow keep it up, um, then when I pour, that will be protecting it. But I don't know if that EnviroTech will eat through that plastic, you know, that saran wrap type plastic or not. Because I know there is like a chemical reaction and it gets a little hot. I mean, and not. Not enough to burn you or nothing like that. It's not like a flame, but <laughs> I just, I'm going to have to do an experiment, I guess. I have to experiment with uh, colors. Um, how do I just do an in murky color? Because I thought that would look good, but unfortunately, when you look at the river, it's not really murky. It's not really super bright blue, but it's not, I'm thinking about doing more of a greenish. I don't know brown, or I mean a bluish brown, so I was, just, I was gonna mix up a couple different like test colors in there when I'm ready to do it, these little cups just to get the color right, so I guess that's what I'm gonna end up having to do, um, yeah, box out there, second tin foil, um, I don't know if it would be seen, because I either need to be able to get it out from underneath, there, because the backdrop's, right now, the backdrop is butted right up against the flat, so it's, it's you know, it's like that, it's, it's an L, you know, and I did drywall tape all in, all the corners, all the way around this, where it drops down there, so it's all covered, um, and plastered you know, drywall mudded and all. So there's nowhere to drop anything down behind. 
which I don't want to do that anyways. I need to seal it to keep all the liquid in. However, I don't know if I could get out completely what's down there, and I don't know if you would see, even even though I would color it, I don't know if you would see the tinfoil or not. But it's not a bad idea. Um, I just want to try the uh, saran wrap, I think. I have a piece of uh, plastic up there now, you can't even really see it. Um, no, it's kind of far away anyways, but... We'll split, bro. Fill me in. I know there's like Mod Podge and that kind of stuff on how to create water. Split Rock says there's many ways to create water. And I know obviously there's like the EnviroTech, there's Woodland Scenics, you know, Water Pour, and all that kind of stuff. Hey, Steve87, how are you? Um, those are the ways I know. When I did the river in the old layout, I used Mod Podge. I painted the bottom of the river the color I wanted it, and you know, it's my first go around with anything like that. It didn't come out terrible. Um, it could have been a better color, but that's okay. Um, and I just did layers and layers of Mod Podge, you know, let them dry, and then a little thin piece of glass in front of the backdrop and the clear caulk. Yeah, well, I was thinking, let me see if I can get what I was talking about, stand by. Actually, here's a little piece of it. Where did I put that? Stand by. <clears throat> All right, guys. So, this was from a poster. This was a, um, like a packaging, um, piece of plastic. Problem is it's not long enough. And I don't want to have a seam in the middle or anything, so I don't want to take any chances of anything going up the wall. So, I just have to wipe this down, but this is a piece of plastic. Uh, like from a poster. Um, that was covering a poster that I, don't, I haven't had up in years. It was, so I cut a little strip of that. So I figured I could kind of tuck that back behind like where it goes up on the sides. I'll put the, um, what's it here? Oh, shoot, sorry guys. Kicking everything. All right. Picked up this ultra clear by Dap. So I haven't tried it yet. I'm just gonna put a nice, like nice bead, right along uh, the bottom of the base, uh, you know where, where it meets the, the base and the wall. And I was gonna slide this down into it. If I could keep it cut short enough, I guess, um, then I don't have to worry about it. I can just leave it as is. I don't have to try to cut it or anything because it's thick enough. That to try to cut that, because I was able to score it and uh, break it, and it worked out pretty good that way. But against the wall, I don't want to have to cut it against the backdrop in case I slip or go through, you know, and I'll be putting big gouges in my backdrop. I didn't think this through. I probably should have let the backdrop up a little more, and I said I put it all the way down, not thinking. So if you guys are going to do a river and have a backdrop like that, leave your backdrop a little high. And give yourself a little, you know, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, something like that. So you have, you know, you don't end up screwing things up. But I think, now that I'm thinking about it, we're kind of talking this through. So this is good. Cut it okay, I can't read anything on there. It's too small. Let's see. I saw that and actually thought of using that as water for my Emerald River. Um, I don't know if I, I don't know. That might work. I don't know if this stuff will yellow at all over time. Um, I've seen guys use something similar, this type of material, to do. Good 
Ripper, do you sand the edges of that after you cut it? Do they get sharp? Please don't check now. Huh. No, it's not. It's really not sharp. This, um, there's a different piece I put in there. I may go with something thinner like this. The one I cut is a little higher. Um, so it might be too wide, but I was afraid of. I was afraid of it getting, like, splashed on there. So I guess what I could do, since I'm not going to, like, glue this a little bit higher. But it's, it's, this one's a little cleaner because I don't have a bunch of scratch lines in it from where I cut that. But it's really not sharp. I'd probably put the old jagged end down, you know, and set that into the, like a thick layer of that gap stuff. And then uh, maybe I could tuck the saran wrap behind this. You know what I mean? Just so I could send that up the wall higher in case I get sloppy and anything splashes or just tuck a piece of like construction paper or something behind it. Like let's put this in and let it dry. You know what I mean? And then I don't know. I have to think that one through a little bit. So I've kind of been like afraid to get started I guess is one another only way I can say it. Same toy man not this some of this foam. Oh, there's two. I use cheap resin from Amazon for my river. Cheaper than a biotech. Work great. I use overhead transparency sheets to dam the ends. Worked well and came off clean. Huh. Hey John, I think you have my email. If you are able to, and you still have a link to that stuff, let me know. Because I, I have to buy it still. I haven't bought any. I don't think I'm going to need as much as I thought I was going to need back here originally. Um, I was originally thinking I was going to need to buy those big, like, I don't know what they are, cork or something, the big jugs of them, you know, like $100. And, but that's before I had the island, and I thought this was going to be, like, way wider than it is when I originally envisioned it. It looked, um, looked like it was going to be wider. So, I sloped everything down a lot more now, so I don't have as big of a river. The valley's wide, it's just not the river, so. Alright, John, that's cool if you can. And then maybe those sheets of plastic, too, if you have those. I like to those. Not to be a pain, but that would be helpful. Because I think this will work. I mean, this is, you know, thick enough plastic. I don't think it'll melt or anything like that. That's my biggest worry, is that I know there's a chemical reaction when that hardener and the resin mix become solid, and it does put off a little bit of heat from the reaction. Now, I'm not saying the heat will cause it to melt. I don't know if the chemical reaction will melt the, like, uh, saran wrap. So I was thinking, well, maybe I could double it or triple it, you know, uh, the saran wrap, like, make it, Doubled or tripled. So it's just a matter of taking the time to experiment. I was very lazy on the layout over the weekend. First, don't get me started. I took two steps backwards over the weekend. Uh, I'm so frustrated at this layout at the moment. Um, so... Tuesday, no, Thursday afternoon, whatever I was off, I did my morning show. I was switching the yard, you know, and just playing around because I, I can't run in circles right now when the bridge is out and stuff. So I was playing around, everything was running great, no issues, nothing. Come down here Saturday to mess around. Turn on the layout, the SP5 is just blinking. What the hell is going on? I got a short some more. So I'm looking all over, checking all the lines, all, I mean all the tracks, I got nothing on the tracks. Took all the locomotives off, thinking maybe a locomotive or something mapping it and shortening things out. Nothing. Like, oh boy. So I get on the web and I look up NCE's website and there's like a troubleshooting thing on there. So I'm going through the steps of the troubleshooting and according to what that showed, I had my SP5 shot. So, I'm like, great, there's, I don't know, 180 bucks right there. 
So, uh, so I had to send that in. Um, mailed that out Saturday afternoon. This was Sunday morning that happened, but, but I was able to make it to the post office and I mailed that back to NCE. And, uh, I don't know, we'll see. Boy, this is so delayed. I'm watching it on the computer. I don't know how delayed it is for you guys, but wow, is this thing delayed. Um, so yeah, I have no, no power right now. So, and they say there's a four or five week turnaround on that. So I sent the uh, DB5, which is the dummy booster. I sent that back with it. Just told them to check that out too. In fact, I want to call them and just see how much it'll cost to go wireless. Um, I know the, I think each throttle is probably a hundred bucks or so to, 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 um, take a regular standard like power cap throttle, pro cap throttle, and turn it into a wireless one. Um, I have two throttles, I'd at least do one of them. And I still have all the UTP panels all over. I'm having issues with that too, I get so far down the line and then it, to put, I don't want to go to the next one. So I, I just, I don't know. This is that's the part of this that I hate. I hate the electronics. I hate all that stuff. You know, some guys love it. Some guys are good at it. Some guys love to. Um, I know you can buy them wireless, Sparky, the throttles. But I think you could send your throttles into NCE and they'll convert them to wireless. They'll put in whatever the wireless stuff is inside of them. I'm going to call them. That's a call. Maybe Thursday or something I'll call. You know, I don't know how long it's going to take for this stuff to get back to them. It's only going to, like, somewhere in New York. Weber or Webster, New York. And, you know, New York's not that far from where I'm at. I think it'd take me about... For me to drive to Buffalo, is like three and a half hours. So, I mean, it's not too far. I don't know where Weber's at, though. Or Webster. Um... Anytime I've sent anything back, I've sent a couple of UTP panels to them, and they fixed them. Uh, didn't even charge me for it. It was just like the pin connectors in there were bent. And then I had something with my controller the one time. There might have been bent connectors in there too, but I think there was something else. I think it was the uh, little turn wheel for the throttle. Was something was going on with it. And they didn't charge me either time, so I don't know how much it's going to cost to repair these. So, fingers crossed, it won't be too bad. Let's see, um, PC is boring. I am very far behind on the chat. It's hard for me to read the chat up here on the phone. It's so small. In fact, it's not even coming up right now. Thirty on the layout. Watch my tracks thirty. Is that four digit tracks? So in the meantime, while I'm messing around and kind of bumming out the press, that my layout is down. I've been messing around building, you know, chassis. One thing with these, uh, they only go up to forty eight feet on these. Now, Atherin did release uh, a pre order for some uh, containers and some chassis and that. I don't think they're coming until like next spring or over the winter though. Not, not super cheap. So, I don't know. Uh, I pre-ordered a few of them. We'll see what happens. See whenever they come in. So I'm building stuff like that. I have uh, get this out in the garage. I got I painted this up. Uh, I'm going to build another one of those. I have one already but I'm going to build that one. Painted this one gray for CSX. Painting all the trailers gray. So I painted all the parts. And, uh, you know, gray with, I did a blue. Can you really see that? I did blue on the inside of the wheels. So. They're actually rubber wheels, though, on these. I mean, it's not bad. I was able to pick these kits up for like less than 10 bucks a piece. Um, I think I picked one up at the show. Got that for like 7 bucks at the show a couple weeks back. 
And then, uh, just since I, since I had the other layout, I, I, I bought a couple of them that I found good deals on. Uh, I think on a Facebook group or something. I don't remember now. But I built this little guy too. So toe lift. Pretty cool. Everything works on it. And I said that it won't. It does. Good stuff. Forks go up and down. Pretty neat. All for the container yard, you know. Um, well, most likely this would be in a container yard, too. I need to do kits for now. Yeah. I needed a break. I don't know how much I'm going to get done over this summer, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's, I've hit this thing really hard, if, if you guys haven't noticed. I've done a lot in a year's time. A little over a year's time. It was last January I started the basement. Thanks, Pappy. Talking to me. Yeah. Hey, Rembrandt, how are you, man? Um, could you add a wide throttle? You can add a wide throttle um, without the uh, Wi Fi uh, hub. If you. Well, yeah. If you think about that. I don't know if you have to have the, um, the the USB interface like for Jam or I or not for that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I could be lying to you. Maybe maybe Sparky knows. No, thanks, Butt Rock. This is the bag top's looking great. Yeah, I'm happy with it so far. And that's probably one of the reasons why I'm like afraid to <laughs> afraid to do this river. I don't want to mess it up. I think I'm going to take some sculpt mold in the river bottom, just to give it a little bit of texture. And I'll set some different rocks and stuff in there, you know. And see, you must have a Wi-Fi interface that you can add by now, but have not been in the market. You can add by now, but I have not been in the market for one. Well, there's an interface. For like, I guess every jam or I, and I'm not sure if you need that for the Wi-Fi. Um, I know to go with the Wi-Fi or the um, cordless throttles, you need that uh, Wi-Fi antenna thing. And all that stuff was hard to come by. Last time I was looking, it's been a little bit a while back now, um, but everybody was like out of stock and all that stuff. Soon have the wide throttle protocol built. What is a DR5000? Who makes that? What system is that for? Or is it like a universal type system? Here, Morris, could you put some ballast at the bottom for texture? Yeah, I probably could just do like rock and ballast and stuff. I just didn't want it to be like flat since. Since I'm not going like with a smooth glass, I'm going to have a little bit of rapids in there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, hey, Dwight. I don't know if I said hi to him. Interface is the Wi-Fi tracks third. Now, can you, John, can you use that? Is that for a specific system? You know, meaning like Digitrax or NCE? Or is it like something you can use with whatever? Or is it just so... Is that just so you can use like, uh, you know, like your phone as a throttle or iPad as a throttle? Is that what that's for? Or sorry, I just I don't know. I've never heard of it before. So then, see, you can run remotely with JMRI. You can. If you have JMRI hooked up through that uh, interface, you can use your computer as a throttle. There's a throttle on there when you're programming and stuff with JMRI. There's a throttle you can run your locomotives while you're programming on. On it. So I assume it would run on the layout too. Use the MRI same as Digitrax as a Wi throttle server if you want the LNW uh, you need the device that John Benaki is talking about. Yes. 
some kimonos. Burris. First time I smell, I got any little kimonos. I picked up a couple. Oh, I talked about this last month. The you know, scale trains operators in the Pacific. I got two of these. Um, I think I mentioned to you guys the last time I was on. Darren, I think Darren from the. Uh, oh Jesus. Lumpkins Railroad. What the hell is this thing called? This channel. He's got actually has a couple of Norfolk Southerns for sale. Chessy Rail Fan 4802. Hi, how are you? Yeah, see, you start talking all this, like, uh, DCC stuff, I, it gets over my head. I know just enough to kind of run things. And then that's it. I don't know all the fancier stuff. I love McCurdy. Frosting. Freezer in the garage. Oh, that sounds like a borrow blast. Randall? Yeah, these are dash nines. Um, I forget to pair them up with my. Uh, I get the veterans unit for uh, Union Pacific. I get the George Bush one too, the 4141. Yeah. Pair them up or pair these up together. Actually, I have I'm waiting to get uh, decoders for them. I'm going to go with the Tsunami 2's and them. Wing on good old Yankee Tabler. 5% discount if you use CRD and the coupon code. Um, yeah, the post office, man. So, <laughs> Yankee Tabler's in New Jersey. So I get noticed, you know, I'm tracking the package. It ends up in Indianapolis. Well, I'm in Cleveland. So it ends up in Indianapolis. The next thing I get is in route. Okay, great, it's in route. Then the next thing after that says it's in New Jersey again. And now today I got one that says it's in route again. So it goes from New Jersey to Indianapolis to New Jersey just to make it here, hopefully next, to Cleveland. So I guess we could have maybe bypassed the whole trip over to Indianapolis, but who am I? I didn't know these things. Randall, there's no freight to run. I don't know, I'm just saying. Maybe the supply chain's finally caught up to everything. They say it's going to get bad, guys. I don't know, man. So there's going to be all kinds of shortages. China supposedly got all kinds of like, people hungry and shit. Food shortages and everything. Hey Randall, I didn't realize that they did those BNSF uh, 25th anniversary locomotives in several numbers. I thought it was like a single locomotive. I didn't know they did a bunch of numbers. Because you said you got three of them, right? Or you have two and the third one's common and they're different numbers. Are they actually different? Or is it the same locomotive just different numbers? In the same design or what? Crew crews are being uh, for attendance. Is that true? I think they're still having some issues trying to find um, people to work in general. A lot of people found alternate ways to make money, you know what I mean? They're not all going back to the, uh, the grind, as we all knew it. A lot of jobs are working from home. I guess my wife is still working from home. I think they're keeping everybody at home permanently. Um, 
Yeah, Bernard, it's no joke, man. And then, uh, you know, I've gotten some good deals on trains.com, T-R-A-N, T-R-A-I-N-Z. That's some good deals. Well, it took me over two weeks to get the last item. They shipped it. They shipped it right away. But they shipped it FedEx. First of all, it's like almost $17 a ship. And it wasn't like anything really big or heavy I got. There's some containers and some... Mostly containers I bought. A couple of trailers and some containers. And, uh... My God. They say you got lost in the system. I had no idea what it was. It took me over two weeks to get that. Probably closer to three. Yeah, Martin. Where you at in, in Cleveland? I'm here on the west side, but where? I'm over here on the east side, Mayfield. Uh, but I've had that too. I've had to go from downtown to the post office here in Lenhurst, back downtown, and it lost. And that was a box of track, like a the big 100 count box of track, and I had uh, like three boxes of cork, 25 count cork. That's when I was first getting ready to get back started again. And uh, I filed a claim on that stuff. Got my money back. Don't tell them, but I got the cork and everything too. Finally, it came like, literally it was almost like three months. Because I ordered it. See, I tore the layout down in November. So I ordered it before I even started because I knew I was going to need it. So, I, you know, I had the money, so I ordered all that stuff because, you know, it's not cheap. And uh, it should have been here, you know, sometime in De December, the latest. I think. You live in Cleveland proper? Oh, all right. I have to get together sometime, dude. I don't know you live in Cleveland. I mean, shit. I mean, I'm like 15 minutes from downtown. Public Square. I drove, you know, to go down and see like uh, the Indians play or something. That's 15, maybe 20 minutes to on traffic. I mean, you get into some rail fanning or something, man. Um, let's see, let me. There you go, Martin. There's my uh, my email. Shoot me an email with your phone number and stuff like that if you want. And maybe we'll hook up one of these times. The weather be getting nice. I'll be uh, looking to get out and do some cool sh stuff. Maybe an order from Old Yard. Yeah, I don't know. It's just in general. Maybe just shipping in general is bad now. I, I mean, I know guys have said that it's been bad, but I haven't really had a whole lot of trouble. And, and like I said, it, what, it's not trains, the, the place, the trains.com. It's not the one that I ordered from because they shipped it right away. Um, but they use FedEx and, you know, apparently FedEx is not that quick. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, that track and stuff. I, like I said, I filed the claim. I got paid for it and everything like that. And probably you know, like three months later, like in the middle of the winter, February, March, something like that, that year, um, it came. But, okay. <laughs> so I actually had it. You know, I was whatever. Nothing was damaged or anything. So. I'm not going to argue about that, it ended up making out, but uh, yeah, Amazon, if, it, if Amazon has it, it's in their stock, you'll get it the next day, sometimes the same day, if you order it early enough. Okay. SAP, no, OBR, I'm not sure about the border crossing, yeah. <clears throat> um, well, you know, I, I had that... Um, when uh, Ron 
deployment. Uh, what do I do with this thing? This card here somewhere. No, anyways, you know what I'm talking about, Ron. Toyman, RC Toyman. Uh, had his second auction, and I, I did the video on the uh, the hoppers I won, the CP uh, rail hoppers, uh, in the auction. I mean, it took a couple weeks, but. Um, well, not even quite a not, not quite a couple weeks. He shipped it pretty quick. Took him a couple days to get it in the mail, but he had a bunch of stuff, so he probably packed everything up and shipped it all at once. Um, now shipping from Canada was like thirty five dollars, so I figured you know it's coming from Canada. You know, what are you gonna you gotta cross the border and everything. But I got it within a couple weeks. It wasn't too bad. I didn't I didn't anticipate it coming very fast because I knew it was coming from out of country. So I, I didn't know how long it would take to begin with, so. Uh, split Rock, there's Cleveland and Monterey clubs. There's some O-scale clubs, some S-scale clubs, N-scale clubs. Um, there is an HO-scale club in Olmstead Falls on the west side of Cleveland. That takes me a little bit to get there. They do like their meets on a weird night, so it's really kind of... Thursday night, and I work Fridays, and they do it late enough that I, did, I go to bed too early on the nights I work. Because I was going to join it a couple years back when COVID first hit, and then I kind of backed off because of COVID and everything like that, so I didn't want to get into that, you know, and then they, they were shut down, so I just, you know, whatever. Oh, wow, Randall. That's crazy. I'll be hard she was quick with the phrase of killer. And Joe, for us, you know, coming from Canada, probably, you know, probably shipping in Canada, probably not too bad for those guys. You know. Um, so many places, I don't understand how one, I, I guess it's whatever deal they got set up. One company will charge, you know, Nine or ten dollars, literally, for shipping. Yeah, it's worth it. I agree. Um, and you order the same basic thing from another company, like you might even get a better price on it, and then they want, you know, 15, 16, 17, you know. So, something that was a great deal, a freight car, say, for 20, 21 bucks, by the time it's all done, it's said and done, you're paying $35 for it, $40 for it. You know, and, and you add tax and all that stuff in. And not, not that it's, it's not the company's fault. It just is what it is, you know. And it's, so it's, that's kind of the downside of not having, like, a local hobby shop that you can get stuff, you know. Thanks, Manny. Spring Creek Hobby Ship's fast. Well, Spring Creek is good, too. Um, I love Lombard Hobbies, too. I bought a lot of stuff from Lombards. Um, I tend to go to Yankee Dabbler more for like the NCE stuff and Iron Planet. I don't think Iron Planet carries the stock that um, Yankee Dabbler carries, but Iron Planet is definitely a better deal. Especially with, you know, I mean, I have my 5% discount code um, with Yankee Dabbler, so that helps some on the shipping. Um, but Iron Planet. Uh, I know Heath is in here. If you type in human, the word human, uh, there's like a 10% discount through Iron Planet. And their shipping is either free or very low a lot of times. There's times I don't even pay shipping. Um, oh, container man in here. Oh, there is a container man. And whoever it is, that then you'll play the air for your <laughs> Well, at least I'll get to go somewhere, container man. You're not talking about me, get out of the same page, brother. My name is Robert. Oh, yeah. And I feel like their shipping, their shipping is pretty standard. They charge like a straight for 13 something, 13.50, I think, for shipping, no matter what it is. So, um, some of the companies kind of base it on, you know, the size of the package and the weight and that kind of thing. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. 
Yeah, usually um, I do check out Iron Planet first because like your code is great and it's a nice thing. Nobody offers a 10%. So I go that route. Um, and then um, I don't know if it's because of your code that you get free shipping or if they just or if they do free shipping or their shipping is generally pretty cheap. And I've always gotten it pretty reasonable as far as the, um... Oh, thanks, Sparky. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's a CR and E. Uh, it's 5% of the Yankee Dabbler, I guess. So, check that out. Feel free to use that. Hey, I need a little bit of help, you know. I use, uh, like when I go to Midwest Model Railroader, you got, uh, Derek Glass, um... Is a DG Model Works. It's five percent discount there. I think. Does Ron's Trains and Things have a discount there? Somebody else does. I think it's. Uh, oh, it's Eric out there. Uh, is he I M M R O Railroad or something like that? Um, I usually use Derek's code. Just because I, I know that one. <laughs> when I type start to type it in the computer, it already pops up. So I just use that. It's, they're both five percent, I believe. Um, both of those guys. Shipping is four ninety five under a hundred dollars in the U.S. for Iron Planet Hobbies. Okay, I wasn't sure. I must uh, evidently I've ordered over a hundred dollars at one time or another because I um, have paid free shipping. And, and the, the cool thing with that is, even on stuff like because I've bought boxes of cork from them. That's what it was from Yankee. I think it was Yankee Dabbler at that time when I wanted, they lost, not like the, the mail service lost that stuff and I, I got the refund and everything. I had ordered a hundred count box of track from Yankee Dabbler and one box of cork. I was going to order all the cork through Iron Planet because they had like the best price on it, but they only had three of them. So I got three there and I bought one from Yankee Dabbler to make equal amounts of cork and track lengths. So... It was the stuff from Yankee Dabbler, unfortunately, they got lost. But yeah, even all that cork, because it was over 100 bucks, even with the weight of it, it was free shipping. So, then you can't beat that, because some places will go by the weight even, you know. So. But, yeah, so. That's kind of where I'm at with things, I, uh, you know. Trying to figure out how to do this river. I'd like to get it done. Kind of a little gun shy to start it. Hey, Sparkle's brother watching. I'll come up here and give us what kick it. <laughs> hey, guys. Behave. <laughs> Sparkles. That's good. I like that one. Let's see if that was stick. Uh... Damn, yeah, Sparky, I didn't get a chance. Sparky put out a video today about um, Strasbourg. I have not had time to watch it yet. So, um, Sparky, if you have a link and you want to post it for anybody that hasn't seen it, go watch that. I'm assuming it has to do with Strasbourg. Maybe not, but it has this Strasbourg shirt on the thumbnail. So, uh, reminder video, okay. Either way, it's coming up, guys. May 20th to the 22nd. And then I'm getting excited. I can't wait to see the guys that are going. A lot of you guys I haven't seen since Steamtown. Some of you guys I've never even met. But it should be a good time. And uh, hopefully we'll have some good weather. Like Wilmer was saying last week, um, you never know what you're going to get for weather that time of year up here in the north. Well, yes, you love to run up there and play it because I had one. Yeah. I got mine through uh, Yankee Dabbler. My uh, little programmer. That was before I knew about uh, Iron Planet. I think I knew about Iron Planet. I think it was right when uh, I first started with uh, Yankee Dabbler as a sponsor. Um, funny story there, too. I I like Ink Dabbler. They're a little slow sometimes to get their orders together and ship them out. I don't think it's a big secret. I think most people would agree with that. Prices are good most of the time. Prices are good. 
So you just gotta be patient. Well, one time I wasn't super patient, and well, I guess I was. It, was, it took a good week and a half or so. It's been a while back when I ordered that DSU local programmer. So I called, I talked to Bob. Told him what was going on. I said, okay. Lo and behold, I get two local programmers. One came from Florida, <laughs> that store, and one came from Jersey. So I got a hold of Bob, you know, and straightened it all out. I did, I shipped it back to him and stuff. He didn't reimburse me for the shipping and that. So, yeah, I wasn't going to do that, you know. Um, but so if you do have an issue, just call the number there, and uh, they'll straighten things out for you and get things going, you know. So, in fact, I was ordering these Tsunami 2s, and I ordered the wrong one. I wanted the 21 pin, and I ordered the wrong thing. And, um, they were able to straighten it out, because they hadn't shipped. There was one good thing, was that they hadn't shipped it yet, so their slow shipping, in that, in that case, ended up working out for me. And I'm not trying to knock them. I don't, I don't mean that as a knock on them. Believe me. Um, they're busy. they got a lot of orders to fill. But, uh. But they'll make it right. Just call them. They're good people there. Uh, let's see. Even the Curdy Sparky. Let's remind me to save the one with all of the to do's on it. You're going to do all that you mentioned. I know you did post one video that had the itinerary that you had bought tickets for already. I don't think it was this one, though. Pre book the train ride to Strasbourg. The Saturday morning shop tour. Okay. I still gotta want to do that. I gotta sit down with the wife and see. So YouTube meet and greet at Greenleaf uh, Club, uh, Museum, and I'll be there with bells. And I think Sparky was container man. I think he was saying something about maybe doing that next uh, next year for this get together. I'd be all about that too. That'd be great. I could easily talk the wife into that one. She's never been west of Mississippi. Hell, no, she'd barely been out of Ohio, west of like Kentucky and Indiana. Over that way. Poor Campbell's probably the furthest west she's ever been. Yeah, that'd be nice. And the cool thing is, we get us more center, center in the country, so people could come in easier, maybe from all around. Hey, Dwayne's working smooth. Hi, Scott. Been in there? I didn't say hi to you. Hi, Billy. I've been over here, remember? But, uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Shell Campana. Shell, who's going to show Campana? Campana. Chief of the museum there? Hey, Gary, you know, uh, you know, STP 45. So, I mean, we're coming up on an hour, guys, and this was, like I said, really not anything planned here. Um, thank you guys for the tips on how to do this water. Uh, John, if you're able to send that email over with what you use, I will definitely check that out. Um, I have a little bit left of the... Um, Envirotech from when I did the pond on the other layout. So I'm going to probably, I'll probably, if I go with Envirotech, I will use it, you know, mixed in. Try in, try in Wyoming, that'd be cool too. Go up there, maybe get to catch the big boy. See when that's running and do a YouTube thing up there when that's, you know, if they're going to be running up there. And uh, check out the Evanston subdivision. That'd be kind of cool. All oh, great ideas. Get some coffee, dude. Can't drink too much more coffee here. It'll keep me up. Actually, it really doesn't keep me up. It gets me up because I have to pee, but it doesn't actually keep me awake. I'm not even personal. Two way different things. I did too, Sparky. I want to see the big boy alive too and running. Um, that'd be so awesome to set it, see if we can catch it and do a YouTube meet and greet if it's up there in Wyoming or wherever it's running, you know, and catch that. That'd be that'd be awesome. 
I'm not even a big steam fan. Like for the, for my railroad, I'm more modern. But I appreciate the steam. I like it. I just don't model it. I try to read the chat here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tanner man, where is the one that that was just restored? Was it forty fourteen? Where they where they housed that thing at? Is that in Wyoming? Cheyenne? Whatever. Nebraska somewhere wouldn't be a bad meetup too. Yeah, it's a huge uh, BNSF yard there, or is that UP yard? Um, and I think it's Nebraska. 2014 is in Cheyenne. Okay. Mm Yeah, I definitely would love to see that thing run. Oh, on the hill with the DD40AX. Okay. How those just basically stationary? I mean, they don't, they don't run or, or what? Strasburg meet is just a meetup since it was always on the back burner. That the showstopper might get it as well, get to it as well, yeah. Because I know the Steam Town meetup was a lot, was way more organized. We had, you know, uh, you, you did a great job on that too, setting that one up. Um, so, but either way, it's it's fine. It's it's going to be a good time, I think. You know, um, it sounds like there's going to be a good amount of people coming to it still. And the display on it. Okay. Yeah, someday. <laughs> you ever, you know, I had a buddy of mine growing up, and I was just talking, talking to somebody about this at work the other day. Him and his dad were big into baseball, Major League Baseball. And they, and I've had other, heard of other people doing this too. But they would travel, it took them a few summers to do it. They would travel from city to city and go see a ball game in all the different stadiums. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm going to have to do that with the trains. I'm going to have to pick a bunch of different places I want to see, take a summer and say, okay, this summer I'm going to hit these three, four, five, whatever. You know, and, and, you know, things that are things that are closer would be easier to hit, obviously. But then you get out for me to get out west and stuff would be a little harder. So you wouldn't hit as many. But that'd be kind of neat, you know, to pick something like that to uh, to do. Um, like I said, like he used to do with his dad with the uh, baseball stadiums and stuff. And uh, which is really cool. I mean, if you're into that, I mean, I like baseball enough. But I don't know if I would. But that'd be kind of fun, though. Even if you know, if you're just like a passive um, baseball fan, just to go to the different cities and the different stadiums to see a game, you know, it'd be kind of neat. Of course, we're, we're going back when we were kids, younger, you know, teenagers, so tickets weren't what they are now. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, man, yeah, there's a lot of baseball games, so maybe they still have the cheap seats. I don't know. And that's all they would get. They'd get, like, the bleacher seats, the cheap seats, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> Derek, you did it with NASCAR. And that's, and that's cool, too. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, you can do it with anything, I guess, if you're into soccer or you're into football or, you know, basketball, whatever, hockey, you know, it's just something to do, something neat, get to see different places, different arenas, pick up some souvenirs from each team, you know, it was cool. Back then, there was a, you used to collect the little bats, so they hit all the bats from the different teams, that was kind of neat, and, uh, I think I used to collect pennants, uh, Pennants, and you know, a bunch of them. So, 
That's pretty neat. In my bedroom wall, I had, they had them, and I had them in a circle on the wall on the different pennants. You know, because they make a circle, you put them all together. Yeah, no, Sparky, that was that was a lot, man. Where's that at, Bernard? I have to come see the great in Nevada. Is that? Is that in Nevada? <laughs> Sparky, it was well. We enjoyed it. So all your your footwork, we appreciated it, and um, hopefully uh, it was worth it for you as well. But anyway, oh, jeez. All right, guys, I'm going to cut out of here. It's 8.04. Um, so Tony's hoping to be on uh, next next month. Um, we may be switching. We have to see how things go. With the dialysis and stuff, he's trying to work, trying to work it out to make it all work, I guess, basically. He's trying to make it all work, so... We may be switching slots weeks. We'll see what happens. Uh, so stay tuned for that kind of news. Um, Robert, the Flying Crow, is on next week, and then I'll be on again the following week. Um, so, uh, yeah, Joe. So if you guys are up Thursday mornings, uh, 8.30 in the morning Eastern Time, every Thursday I do the CRNE Morning Brew. Feel free and welcome to all to stop in. Some guys just stop in real quick on their way to work, say, hey, you know, they don't stay long. It's just a just a BS session, kind of like we're doing tonight, um, just talking. Um, Sparky, you on tomorrow night? If, uh, if he is, it'll be 7 o'clock tomorrow. I think he says five weeks, five weeks. Make plans for Strasburg. Go on and check out, the, uh, check out his videos and tell you what he's doing uh, and what times and try to catch up with them and you know we can do that uh robert sacco how are you buddy thanks for stopping in i'm getting ready to, to get off here but i appreciate you stopping in nice videos he had up the other day too um okay we'll feel better sparky if you're not if you don't do it are you gonna have a fill in if you don't if you're not doing it tomorrow or is that uh, to be announced Work. Yeah, that's okay, man. Appreciate you stopping in. Missed it again, John. That we're on uh, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Nice, uh, nice job on the starting of that scenery, John. Uh, the tracks look great, all weathered up in that. So, here, if you're not following John Arthur, he's uh, he's back up and running with the Manchester. Uh, oh boy, I'm gonna mess it up, Manchester. His layout. <laughs> His new version in the garage. So he's got that. Uh, we're gonna start doing some scenery in that. So. Uh, yep. Um, so yeah, we'll do that, and then uh, Thursday. Let's see. So yeah, Thursday morning for me. 8.30 a.m. and then um, Jim Tedesco has the short line Thursday at 6 p.m. and then you got the Canadians third rail Thursday you got them on at 8 p.m. Thursday is a pretty full day apparently and then uh, you have your sidetrack Sunday guys you do Saturdays uh, 8 p.m. you have uh, already already does Saturday 8 p.m. Eastern I don't know what time it is out there in Australia but you got his show on 8 p.m. Eastern so, thank you guys for stopping in. Appreciate you being understanding uh, that we had to, you know, I filled in here for uh, Tony. Say prayers for Tony. He's doing okay. You know, he got a long road, but he's doing okay. So, uh, that's good. So, that being said, we'll catch you in the chats, catch you in uh, the live streams, and uh, yeah, I knew what you meant, John. <laughs> uh, Thanks for the shout out too, by the way. 
Um, so anyhow, that being said, talk to you later. Bye for now. Let me shut this thing off. <laughs>